Hello viewers, today in this session we are going to discuss about nitrogenous constituents of blood and urine or non-protein nitrogenous substances. Nitrogen is an atom which is designated as N which is present in most of the biomolecules. In that amino acid is one of the compound which contains nitrogen. These amino acids are going to make proteins by a peptide bond and they are called as nitrogenous protein substances because this nitrogen which forms proteins whereas non-protein nitrogenous substances means they are nitrogen containing compounds but they are not protein in nature so let us discuss this <coughs> urea uric acid creatinine proteins and free amino acids are the nitrogenous compounds present in blood and urine so all these are the list of nitrogen containing compounds starting with urea uric acid creatinine proteins and free amino acids and among these urea uric acid and creatinine are called non-protein nitrogenous substances so in the li in the above list we have picked only the nitrogen containing compounds but not protein in nature and they are urea uric acid and creatinine and hence they are called as non-protein nitrogenous substances so let us discuss in detail about this urea uric acid and creatinine in detail about its uh, importance this slide shows you three column in the first column you can see nitrogen containing compounds and the second is the source in this first one is amino acids present in the proteins and its clinical significance and uh, when it is going to have increased level and what is its uh, implication or biochemical significance is shown in the third column whereas ammonia amino acid is the source and it is increased in the liver renal disease and inborn errors of enzymes metabolism of urea cycle <coughs> next is urea that is source is ammonia and it increases in liver disease and renal disease creatinine it is the source from creatine and it increases in the kidney or renal disease uric acid source is purine nucleotides adenine and guanine and it increases during purine metabolism disorders and excessive cell lysis so last three urea creatinine and uric acid are the important non-protein nitrogenous substances they contain nitrogen but they are not proteins and hence they are called as non-protein nitrogen substances you can see in the ending proteins Aramark amino acids by proteolysis further it is converted to ammonia by transamination and deamination process and that ammonia is converted to urea in urea cycle and we have already discussed urea cycle so the last urea is the non-protein nitrogenous substance so the urea we are going to discuss in detail urea is the end product of amino acid or protein catabolism and uh, this we have studied in the urea cycle the normal urea level in the human body is in adults 12 to 36 mg per deciliter of the blood among this value if the blood urea is present then the person is normal whenever the urea concentration increases above 36 mg per deciliter it indicates complications clinical significance urea levels are in the upper range in people whose protein intake is high blood urea concentration increases with age so age is the normal factor clinical increased blood urea is seen in three conditions so urea which is a condensation product of uh, ammonia and carbon dioxide by a process called as urea cycle the ammonia which is toxic is converted to less toxic urea and excreted from the body if urea 
increases in the body what it indicates let us discuss before that urea is synthesized in the liver and that urea that is produced in the liver is going to be excreted in the kidney so production in the liver and excretion in the kidney so let us see the causes for increased urea level pre renal causes most of the blood urea is excreted into urine by glomerular filtration when glomerular filtration rate is decreased in the nephron of the kidneys blood urea level is elevated when plasma volume is diminished as in diarrhea and vomiting plasma volume decreases means whenever the water content of the plasma decreases because of diarrhea and vomiting that means water loss takes place in diarrhea and vomiting that leads to decreased water content in the plasma glomerular filtration decreases because the plasma volume is dependent on glomerular filtration rate and decreased glomerular filtration rate and blood urea is elevated so this is pre renal cause where it is purely not due to not due to renal or kidney it is because of other than the renal factors pre renal causes whereas second one is renal causes the urea level in the blood may increase in all forms of kidney diseases like uh, acute and chronic glomerulonephritis so this is related to kidney related or renal related problems later stage of nephrosis polycystic kidney malignant hypertension and hydronephrosis are the reason for the increase to urea level in the blood this is regarding renal next is post renal causes that means after the process of uh, urine formation then what are the post renal causes for urea increased in the blood let us see any of type of obstruction in the lower urinary tract diminishes glomerular filtration resulting in elevated blood urea levels so in urinary tract problems then urea level is increased enlargement of the prostate and stones in the bladder are the sum of the post renal causes for increased blood urea levels so these are the reasons for increased urea level in the blood so in this uh, slide you can see in the starting ammonia during this process of deamination ammonia is produced from amino acids with the release of keto acid that ammonia is utilized for the synthesis of uh, ammonia urea by urea cycle and then uric acid by uric acid synthesis process in this ammonia you can see very soluble very toxic found in organisms that do not need to conserve water and uh, that means in fishes whereas urea soluble toxic found in organisms that conserve water and uric acid they are non toxic non soluble found in organisms that must conserve all water some waste so next is uh, this urea normal urinary content is about 20 to 30 grams of urea is excreted in one day clinical significance urea is formed in liver and end product of protein catabolism and so it is excreted depends on protein intake so more the protein intake more the amino acid more the amino acid means more the nitrogen compound nitrogen present that leads to more synthesis of urea so increased production of increased consumption of protein leads to increased pro production of urea and a large increase in urea excretion is found in febrile or wasting diseases one is diet related and another one is disorder related next is second uh, non-protein nitrogen substance that is uric acid uric acid is the end product of urine catabolism blood uric acid value of normal value of uric acid in the blood is 2 to 6 mg per deciliter increased blood uric acid level is seen in old age and in high purine diet so uric acid uh, is one of the compound that is uh, synthesized from high purine intake adenine and guanine uric acid is also increased in leukemia and impaired renal functions so the leukemia and also in the kidney disorder functions the uric acid is increased gout is clinical condition characterized by hyperuricemia 
so this uric acid causes one of the clinical condition called as gout what is gout gout is characterized by hyperuricemia so increased uric acid in the blood hyper means increase uric means urea uric acid and emia means blood hyperuric acid in the blood is called as hyperuricemia which result in the accumulation of sodium urate crystals so this uric acid is converted to sodium urate crystals by combining with sodium so sodium plus uric acid sodium urate crystals resulting in the inflammation and arthritis so arthritis uh, joint pains will uh, takes place during the gout this condition known as gout for it can be treated by suitable methods so this is about say, second non protein nitrogen substance that is uric acid next is another non protein nitrogen substance is creatine or creatinine so creatine is the excretory product of muscle creatine during muscular activity creatine phosphate is converted to creatine that creatine is converted to creatinine serum creatinine the normal serum creatinine is 1 to 2 mg per deciliter clinical significance the values increases during kidney diseases like acute or chronic renal insufficiency during renal problems this compound increases in the blood above the 2 mg because normal value you have seen 1 to 2 mg per deciliter urinary creatinine the normal daily excretion of creatinine is from 1 to 2 gram per day so this is excretion in the urine 1 to 2 gram per day so clinical significance <coughs> urinary creatinine is derived from muscles creatine phosphate and is not influenced by protein intake so this is not related to quantity of protein intake it is related to muscle activity as the creatine is related to amount of muscle tissue and so of creatine phosphate of in the body is excretion in urine normally remains constant in an individual for which reason it can be used to check the reliability of 24-hour urine collection so if any muscle related uh, problems then the increased creatinine can be seen in the blood and urine and this creatinine level can be measured by creatinine clearance test and it gives the idea about the functioning of kidney that is renal function test so this is about creatine or creatinine which is a third non-protein nitrogen substance so this is about uh, we have discussed about non-protein nitrogen substance next we are going to discuss about some of the test and in that we are going to discuss about reducing sugar in the urine so urinary test with related to reducing sugars so in carbohydrates there are two types of sugars reducing and not reducing sugars reducing sugars which are having free aldehyde and keto group they usually react with the benedict's reagent and forms a color change whereas non reducing sugar will not react with the benedict's reagent <coughs> glycosuria refers to the excretion of sugars mainly glucose in the urine glycosuria that means glyco means glucose urea means urine so that means in bracket you can see excretion of glucose in the urine occurs in diabetic mellitus and renal diabetes is the main condition of glycosuria so kidney related problem leads to glycosuria where glucose is present in the urine glucose is a carbohydrate it is not visible then how you are going to able to find out the glucose present in the urine that is what this test is going to have importance so other conditions of glycosuria or the la lactosuria that means during pregnancy and lactation in that condition also urine contains glucose and uh, galactosuria fructosuria like that uh, other ureas conditions are there reducing sugars in the urine are detected by benedict test so whatever the uh, above discussed uh, lactosuria galactosuria and glycosuria that is all reducing sugar compounds present in the urine and hence these reducing sugars in the urine how it is going to be detected it is detected by benedict test how to perform this benedict test so the reducing sugars which are uh, invisible which are present in the urine how we are going to find it out it is by benedict test to 5 ml of benedict reagent add the 8 drops of urine so 
take in a test tube of 5 ml of benedict's and add 8 drops of the urine sample and mix and boil for exactly 2 minutes and cool and observe so after boil and cool if you see the color change like you can see in the third column in the box green and fourth yellow and fifth orange and fourth brick red they are all you can see in the inference plus and double plus triple plus that means that plus indicates the presence of reducing sugar whereas the second column that is blue that means nil that means the glucose is not present in the urine so no glycosuria if you get blue color or no reducing sugar in the urine whereas apart from blue blue color if you get other colors that means reducing sugar present in the urine sample next is protein so presence of glucose in the urine is called as glycosuria whereas presence of protein in the urine is called as proteinuria protein in urea how it is uh, detected that is discuss presence of detectable amount of albumin or protein in ca is the characteristic feature of feature of kidney diseases so if kidney disorders are there you can see the presence of protein in the urine how it is detected albumin in the urine is detected by heat and acidic acid test heat and acidic acid test is performed by taking 10, 10 ml of urine so you are going to take 10 ml of urine in a test tube and uh, boil for uh, boil the upper part upper part of the solution is boiled and add 3 drops of 1% acetic acid so by adding 3 drops of 1% uh, acetic acid if you observe the cloudy white precipitation formation in the upper layer it indicates presence of protein or if there is no presence of white cloudy precipitate then the protein is absent this is about re regarding the presence of protein detection in the urine and uh, like this we are having several other tests we will discuss in the next session thank you